Hey there, folks. It's Leo Alderpol. And I've come through some pretty spectacular country to get here. Um, and you American folks are going to like this because I don't think there's anything more English sounding than this place. It's called Wimbleball. Wimbleball Lake. And uh, I'm here in pretty much the heart of Exmoor, really. Um, I've taken you to Dartmoor quite a lot in the past. This is another more similar to it, a bit further north. But I'll show you around a bit. When I found somewhere to park myself. There we go. That's what it's all about. So just over in that direction in the southwest, um, I don't know if you guys can make it out, uh, but you can actually see uh, the plateau of Dartmoor that's just on the horizon over there, uh, about 30 miles or so away. Fantastic. And all this beautiful green and rolling countryside. We've got a beautiful 360 degree view from the top of the hill here. And then back towards the lake over there. Now, wherever you go in this country, whenever you reach a high hill like this, uh, that's got a 360 degree view, you'll find one of these things. Um, this is, we call them a trig point or a triangulation pillar. Um, now, fortunately, we've got some great map makers in this country called the Ordnance Survey. Um, so this thing's got a, an old sort of brass mount for a theodolite. And somebody will have been up here and will regularly come up here to one degree or another, mount their theodolite, take some measurements from the high points around here where there'll also be another one of these uh, and make us the wonderful maps that we have. And it's funny, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know what these things are for. <laughs> they think it's just some kind of marker post or something like that. But no, they have a very practical function. And some of them are very old. Ah, oh, there we go though. Wonderful. Wonderful. What a beautiful day. I don't think it gets much more quintessentially English than this. So, there's going to be no escape from the heat and the sun up here. So I ain't going to sit down and have a smoke just yet. But I'll uh, pick you up again as and when I find a nice place to chill out for a bit. So I'll see you in a sec. Hello folks. Well, I'm going to stitch this video on. To a couple I've done uh, a couple of weeks back that I never got to finish. But I'm uh, down in Sussex at the moment. I'm just uh, visiting a few people, a few friends, um, to uh, to say see you, basically. And I thought I'd just bring you here real quick, so I was nearby. You can look at the view behind me here. This is absolutely stunning, gorgeous. But uh, just as a matter of interest, this pub right behind me here is a place called the Earl of March. Now, the poet William Blake, when he wrote the poem that's probably become the most iconic song uh, of England, Jerusalem, William Blake actually wrote that in that pub right there. And he wrote it, this green and pleasant land, whilst looking out over exactly this view here behind me. Now, it's a bit of a shame, really, because the pub here has become a bit of a gentrified wine bar these days and I did go in there uh, some time ago a good year or two back and uh, where there used to be a little plaque on the wall next to the window that William Blake sat on when he wrote that poem Jerusalem it's not even there anymore so it's a shame there's a little bit of our history that's uh, that's kind of been gentrified and turned into this posh little wine bar for rich people but back in the day when I was hanging out here as a sort of late teens, early 20s. This actually used to be a biker pub. 
Um, but I reckon William Blake would have liked it as a biker pub a lot more than this, than this posh wine bar. <laughs> but there you go anyway, this is the uh, Sussex town, so the village I'm in is a little place called Lavent, just north of Chichester in West Sussex. And what we're looking out over there at the back is the South Downs, it's now a national park actually. So we're looking out behind there over towards Goodwood Racecourse. And Goodwood Airfield, that sort of place. But it's still a beautiful part of the country anyway. I spent many happy years here. But I'll probably pick this up a little further down the road. What did the Romans ever do for us? Well, one of the things that they did for us was to build straight roads like this one. So I've, uh, I've come about uh, 80, 90 miles or so from where I was earlier on. And uh, first of all, apologies for the mashup that this video is going to be. But I figured while I'm doing this little road trip, I'd uh, take you to a couple of interesting places. And I'm actually in the county of Dorset now. And uh, I'm actually on an old Roman road that is going to take you somewhere uh, which I shall show you very shortly so where was that Roman road taking us well that was the old part of the this is actually part of the old Roman road that at one time would have led all the way down to Exeter to the city where I live which was uh, at one time uh, pretty much the largest Roman uh, fortification in the west of England. Although they forayed out into uh, Cornwall and they set up uh, a number of smaller forts there, they were never quite as strong in Cornwall as they were elsewhere in the country, those pesky Cornishmen. But where I'm at at the moment is I'm standing on top of a place called Egenon Hill, and originally this was an Iron Age fort and this particular county that I'm in, in Dorset, is littered with these forts and various other sort of signs of uh, Iron Age uh, and, and Neolithic even um, life. So we've got a long, long history uh, in this part of the country. And the most famous of these forts, uh, similar to the one that I'm standing on, is Maiden Castle, uh, which is, as I say, it's over near Dorchester, back in that direction. Very, very large and sizable fort. Um, and a lot of very fascinating exca uh, excavations have been made around that area. But I love this part of the county and you can see, although you can't see behind me because I'm not standing exactly on top of the hill, there's actually a trig point which if I've stitched together these videos properly you'll now know what one is. There's actually one of, a trig point just up there. But you can see from the valley behind me uh, and heading looking back towards the west over there and then from the top of the hill but here behind me right now over the other side towards the sea you could have defended this position up here on the hill very very easily indeed so this would have originally had ramparts all around it um, and you can see it's a sizable sizable hilltop this would have been a a, a proper good sort of fortification uh, with villages with essentially with a village inside it Fantastic. So, apologies again that this is going to be a bit of a mishmash of stuff. I've, in the course of this video, inadvertently, taken you from Exmoor over to Sussex and then back again towards where I live uh, to here in Dorset. And no pipe smoking in this video, if I remember correctly. But I figured you'd probably want something a little bit more interesting. Than, uh, than my last video but uh, I'll leave you with this just check this place out isn't this just amazing let's hope the camera can pick up that view for you oh, I just love this county love this county well it's been a hot day 27 degrees 
And I tell you, over in this country, when it hits about 24, 25, people really start to lose their shit. <laughs> it's the British complaint, the weather. But I tell you what, I love it. What a fantastic day. And uh, what a fantastic place to end it. But I'll see you folks again real soon anyway. You take care. And I'll catch you again soon.